again for the fourth and final time. We bring you a grand final to the Royal Arena. Denmark, it's time to make your country proud. Get loud! Let's get wild. Inside the server, outside the server. Royal Arena, Rops holds. Looking to give you the show. Kerrigan says seven map pool. I'll believe it when I see it. Brogy and Rops, they're gonna hold off at the beginning of this one. There was a good amount of support for that mid hold. Player back by elevator, so still layers even if Vitality wanna come at this, but they're gonna have to do it man down. I saw so much talk out of Kerrigan right before that game started. We have no idea if the prep ran this deep, right? Coming right into Vertigo is a big question. Vitality would never make a pick like this without some crazy anti-strat, and they must expect that phase would have no idea it would come through. They have to. You know, if I only had a six map pool, I'd be telling everybody seven maps. But, but that's a veto of champions. You know, that's something that you can only do when you're one of these elite teams to throw a curveball like this. You know it's going to be well prepared. This could speak volumes about x coming back into the lineup for Vitality. No Zonic to work with, big shoes to fill. Meanwhile, Vitality have just fallen silent ever since that first clash towards mid. A little skin shown, twists, falls back, but no panic. And I don't expect to see panic throughout this match. The experience on either side, twists just can't quite get that headshot. Apex, interestingly, double kill back for him. His fresh mags come out, but he can't get anything over the two. Toppled by his counterpart in Kerrigan. It is phase winning pistol once more. Yeah, that's uh, one step closer for Kerrigan. It's always going to feel like that map lead, round lead, whatever. Kerrigan's story on the line here. Actually, this is just the perfect final from the perspective of Vitality or FaZe for FaZe and CS2, but for Vitality's year as a team to win the only major this year. The team to come out of that as the best team of the year up until FaZe showed up as soon as a new game dropped. Yeah, right, because a FaZe that wasn't showing up towards the tail end of CSGO. Yeah, the way that uh, I think Manny put it was, was great. You know, it was a team that wasn't, they weren't finished, but they were out of energy, right? They were uninspired for a while like they always made games competitive they always made for exciting finals they didn't win as many tournaments as some of the teams that were dominating throughout 23 g2 vitality but they still always were a threat yep. but now they're inspired energetic straight up champions undefeated still <laughs> so far in cs2 unreal You'd expect to see something like that at the beginning of CSGO or the beginning of a new game because everything's so new. But with CS2 and the amount of people who are still good, there's clearly a direct transfer of skill from one game to the other, right? I mean, it's not like too much has changed. But the fact that they can be this dominant is so crazy. And I say that, but on a round with almost nothing, Vitality have already come up with two kills. Now, luckily for FaZe, there's not this immediate follow through out of Vitality. They just pause for a second. Get their hands on that M4, putting it in the hands of the young man, Flames. A few seconds still left. Another peek off of Kerrigan. Looking to dance with Zywoo, but you gotta be cautious with that pistol in hand. Even if it's a Glock, it's Zywoo we're talking about. Ooh. Sure enough, right there, half the health gone. A single headshot, but nothing further. Spings will trade, what? and so will Flames. That M4 inches closer. What, there, no, there was no investment at all. Look at the amount of money they have left over, and they're in a two-on-one. FaZe were the embodiment of force by wins versus complexity yesterday. FaZe took it from their opponent time and time again. And now just like this, we see a crack in FaZe's armor. A shot to the back of Twist, and he looks to disengage. I mean, he feels pinned. Wow. He's done. Vitality will come in with bare bones and pick up a second round win. That's a massive show of strength. That is so ridiculous. I mean, wait. The investment right there? When's the last, when's the last time that happened to FaZe in the last few months? We didn't have a single SMG, no Galil's bot, no armor. No armor, right? A P250 maybe for Spinks. Holy. Now, FaZe coming into this are the favorites by the numbers. Anybody who put money on the game, of course, you're going to bet on the team that hasn't lost before, right? That makes perfect sense. But as we've seen Vitality power up in this tournament, in sort of the infancy of CS2, get comfortable as they were in CSGO. I don't think people would be surprised if they were one of the teams that could beat FaZe and end the streak. Looking back, it might seem like, oh, it was only a matter of time. 
We might be witnessing that right now. We'll have to see. Sphinx catching twists. Turn the wrong way. This is the buy up. Faze working with more than what Vitality had. And, well, Kerrigan can't manage more than just the one. Still enough to soften up this bomb site. And tidbits of utility to be thrown forward too. Low health on half of them. And Brokey lucky to be alive now. As Apex pulls off the site, those smoke grenades are gonna just be all that Vitality really need. Or oh. so it seems. Flames will catch it through the side of the smoke and look to just continue this fight. But he's got to be careful because his position continues to be given away. The peak on the side of it, not going to stop him, and he will clear both. So Vitality convert, but it's still a good test from FaZe. It was, yeah, it was a good test from FaZe. And yeah, again, we're going to learn about how ready and how comfortable they are here on Vertigo. This is something that they've created for themselves, right? Seven map pool. They also That also means that people can take them anywhere. Their band could change all the time. I wonder if we look back on this. You know what I'll say? Most of the time in a video like this, there's a little bit of egg on the face of the team that took a risk. The team that starts to pick into Vertigo when Vertigo first comes out, the team that picks Ancient first, usually they're the ones who get trashed. It's usually the team that's already the favorite, that have a history of winning, that end up winning again. So that's why it's so... That's why we talked about it so much. Coming into this first map. Couple hand cannons for FaZe. Vitality coming into this map with a very tempered pace, right? Feels like if you're gonna take a swing at the current Kings, don't miss off the start. We saw that insane back and forth between FaZe and Complexity yesterday. Nine force by rounds back and forth. And well, right now, FaZe aren't getting that from Vitality. Vitality won't give them this early lead. No response just yet. And it's fair to expect Kerrigan to die with just the P250. Vitality hit the pause momentarily, throw up that wall of smokes, and Brokey just peels away from it, so nobody's sitting in a pocket to really deal an issue to Vitality. It's just all fine. Yeah, they win the space. There's no way to fight into that, so okay. Even with just a USP, it's worth falling back, and maybe they can get a kill later. Boost comes up, ring goes down. And there won't be any type of eco back. Saiwu so makes sure he puts everybody down. Fundamental gameplay says on the A site, you get to the corner of the top of the ramp. You get control of that around the minute mark. You have your smokes ready. Okay. Yeah, you can jump and shoot in this game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Apparently. That's why Zawu loves this game, he said. Get top ramp control, minute left. Wall smokes on the A site. And, and if it's at that point and you haven't lost any players, you have a massive advantage. So that's what the T's are going to try to constantly repeat. Now, FaZe, they're smarter than to try those really risky re-aggressions on the ramp where they slide out. They're going to do that once in a while, but most of the time they are going to take the fight to the bottom of it. Because they understand that Vitality know what to do with the space. And here it is already. Three-pronged attack. Ooh, bit messy from Zywu. Doesn't quite finish his kill. Rain will pick up one. Oh, he got away. Damn. Manages to escape, surprisingly. Apex's nade is great for damage, so that's going to be a three wounded for FaZe. They know probably about two. Blind over the yeah, sandbags. You, you can see they're actually pretending to not be afraid of it. Apex peaks. Oh, oh, oh interesting. Double kill off the short play. One of the players who was already so low in rain, and that half health of Brokey that he'd softened up with his nade. And Apex has been having an actual hell of a tournament. Oh. Fourth Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. Keep going. Fourth rated player for them, right? It's just Mezzi still trying to find his form with this lineup. Biggest game of Mezzi's career, as properly said by the analysts. Yeah. And honestly, it's not an event that right now he'll be remembered for. Yeah. His grand finals when Mezzi comes alive shows the potential that earned him this spot. I mean, huge shoes to fill for both the coach and replacing Magisk. Especially in the hearts of this arena. Mm-hmm. We get another creep and crawl out of Vitality, a slow play. Guys, are Vitality still a little Danish? Just a little, huh? <laughs> you can claim them. We, came, we claim Americans all the time, so. Just a little. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for Magis, would they even have a major? Would they even have a major? No Magis, no major. Molly's come through the site. And we're talking about a no-utility retake for FaZe. We're talking about a no-kill half so far for Twists. 
But they'll face Sight and they'll see nothing because Vitality are just again appropriately leaning back, giving tons of space over. No duels, no, no, no freebies for FaZe to try and flex this retake. And yes. with no kits either, they're going to call it quits. This is a 4-1 early lead for Vitality and a map pick that is looking wonderful so far in the series. That's very impressive. That's very impressive. Uh, and uh, it's been a great tournament for IGLs overall. Whether it was Boomich on Cloud9, did some amazing things as both... He, he kind of came in as a Naphany, as somebody who was Naphany before Naphany even existed, really. Just to come back and show that he could still play this level. He was one of the guys who shot Zaiwu in the back, flanked him as he fell back out of position. He was outplaying the best players on the other side of the server and made Cloud9 look like they could make it to this grand final. Got close, in fact. Then you have Kerrigan, who has also been pretty damn good 1v4 yesterday versus Complexity. Apex, as you just pointed out, has been fragging. And JT, JT. is the number one out of all of them. An unreal uptick comparatively. So it has been a tournament of fragging IGLs. Maybe they really are more than dead weight. That's what I'm talking about. You know you love Counter-Strike. Two. Who does? <laughs> In uh, Maui's interview with Magisk, that was, and uh, Kirby. So much interesting insight into IGLs and what they bring. And, oh wait, hold on. No, okay, yes. Rops, that's a quick one. All Execution, right. oh, making okay. a double. He's going home with that. Unscathed. Not even a scrape on the knee. 100 HP for Rops, and he's out with two on a rifle. Yeah, he's trying to strike the fire starter. Get himself into a round. Get FaZe closer to this early start from Vitality. Let's do it with a bunch of bodies alive as well. That's what they're banking on. We've seen oh. this before. Vitality responding with the B ramp hit after they lose a couple players. It's the strap from the pistol. Rops just tucked along wall, will die to Zaiwu, flames efficient trade frags, and he is off to the races. An incredible start for the young man. Okay, one on two situation. Can plant the bomb. Let's see how much space they give him. They might have to respect this. Flames, eat your heart out. You've got a full minute left over. This could be the different difference between domination and destruction here for FaZe. If they could pick this back up and pull back this half. But he's got close to an even chance of being able to change those odds. At the very start of this event, Apex goes on record as saying, we will not replace Magisk, so the young players have to step up. Flamesy, under the magnifying glass now, at the 25 second mark, he is on the opposite side of the map. And well, FaZe have just found out. So he's gonna have to lean back, bank on this AK, try to hit those headshots. He could have played passive, and he still can. Options open with a flash to work with. CTs have the kit on Kerrigan, so his hands will be busy as this retake comes out. Will the trades be good? Will they be needed? He tucks in. And as he sits back, he hears that first tap. Kerrigan, like we said, hands busy all the way. All the way! All the way for uh, Kerrigan! Oh, he will clutch and kill! Wow, the stick out in the open. They cover the ramp. It was planted for both, so he thought, okay, they're probably going to tap it and try to push. That's a fair call to make. There's a part of him that wanted to go back there in the CT spawn. And he went for the standard play. It was still a 1v2. And they're almost lucky to get a bomb plant considering they started this round out 5v3. But I think there was a world where he wins that. Stick just in time there for Kerrigan. Pros do not fake. Back has an MP9 on twist, and it's a faster pace. We haven't seen this Ooh. kind of tempo. Flamesy comes around, and with the pressure off the flashbang, phase it's a one off round potentially queued up. Yeah, that's a round one, 1v1. One one. But a sketchy road ahead. If they suddenly they get reset. They forgot about this. This one comes down to timing. Broki strikes a single Ooh, frag. Nice denial out of Flamesy. I mean, his headshots are there, the trade frags are good. 
Did the same thing back to the B site, but Rain has that intuition to check for the mid flank, and Sphinx's lurk will get punished. Yeah, it comes in early. That could have been the round done, obviously, if he gets that kill, but now it becomes a lot more tricky here for Vitality. As they try to group back up, it's an initial peek from Apex that can't even be traded. But that little delay gives Flames a chance to come back. Yeah. Three kills on Flames again, and he needs another double to ace. He chases the elevator kill. That's oh. four. Flames! Trying to set phase on fire and he's gone. Another chance to just eject out of this bomb site and try to clutch. Lost it in the last one. But he's gone. He is out of there. And as his bomb goes down, it is a very quick approach for Robs on 45 HP. Oh! But his head, and that is two failed clutches out of flame. Wow. The aim is there, the close is not. He was nearly the ember that erupted. And instead, he's extinguished. That was so close from Flamesy, but man, you got to feel for him. He's the guy who got four kills in that round, plus it turned into another clutch from him. Sphinx could have, again, won the round right away, but if he had waited in that situation in a four on three, yeah, he was on a pretty fast timing, but if the attack came in at least a little bit up the ramp, they don't check the flank, then they have a fair trade at the guys coming up the ramp to fight, plus Sphinx to come in later. That feels like more of a lock, but good on Rain for checking his flank. There was no one there in mid, they were worried about it, and they didn't get tunnel vision. And that's something that you can always count on phase for. So I think even if they get told instructions, they're still going to keep in their mind an inventory of options that can take place. And they're, they're five fingers on one hand. Sorry, taken. <laughs> that was number one on the things of list that he loves, right? Yep. Zywoo, what can't you live with, he was asked. Yeah. Girlfriend, Counter-Strike, and oh. Mango Bubble Team. Not even water. What is this guy? Molly and a smoke exchange towards the B site. As much as we can sit here and sing Flames' as praise, 15 Ooh. and 4, it's Rops, 10 and 5. Cooling off his opposition, Zywoo, easy opening pick. A little peek out of rain that gets punished. You know, we saw Apex's spray get a little far away from it, kind of sloppy, let the players move around top ramp, but you put Zywoo on the big green scoped up, and no movement comes for free. 5v4 is not enough, though. We've seen Vitality get to a good position early round here in these last couple. Phase no, they can escape. Start boosting their economy if they pick up a decent round win, and they have found options to get active on the map. Aggressive push here out of Robs, just trying to find his victim as Kerrigan has to lean back. Apex comes around the corner. Oh, and Kerrigan, he can't react to it. Apex tries to go one further, and he will get away with a second frag. Whoa. Dragging in game leaders, folks. And they caught the flank. So Robs, well, sorry, Robs got the kill, but now they know where he is. Easy for them to turn attention back. Sphinx can just anchor this push, and it's just far too daunting for Robs to try to get this going. Damn. We saw a single player alive for back-to-back -back round wins out of phase, mm -hmm. and now they've lost the next one with two standing, if they're lucky. There's a chance Vitality can come clear out these players, and then we're talking phase with real issues. This is a moment where, like, just to compare it to another team, when I talk about Heroic and Cadian, where they would make an effort to hunt down the remaining players the and board. absolutely wipe, wipe the, the money clean. That's not Vitality style. It's more think about our own money first, play very fundamentally sound counter strike and keep an advantage never give it away keep all their utility into the next round and try to win again from just a slightly more dominant position so those two guns could matter here for phase it's actually their only lifeline now after winning the last two rounds in a 1v1 so it looks like the 5v4 is finally add up I mean, the early and mid rounds is all vitality. Mm -hmm. In closing, of course, players are going to pull out some clutches, deny some clutches. They can expect that. I think that's where Apex just wants to say, turn up the velocity. Let's end this round before it gets to a nervous point, past the 40 second mark, one or two players alive with lethal nades. Let's explode on them. It's an element of Apex's game that luckily hasn't gone away. There was a time with Vitality struggles where I would watch Apex and it felt like he had something better to get to. Felt like he needed rounds to end fast and then giving away openings, particularly <laughs> on Vertigo, towards short side A ramp. Oh, spamming through the smoke and he shot Just back, yeah. All the time, taking yeah. risks he didn't need no, to. No, he's so much more responsible now. Yes. And we're talking about that evolution in one year, you know? 
And that's Apex, who was a top 20 player in 2018 as an entry fragger, one of the best players in the world as an individual, had to drop off, learn how to IGL, come back, and is now both an elite IGL and a very reliable individual player. Particularly at this event. Putting his frags up as there's the peak out of flames. He gets the better of the B site. We haven't seen early success at a B site. It's been ramp hit, ramp hit, sometimes mid lurk. And now with that instant kill, I mean, those two rifles that Twist and Rops are able to save, they're nowhere to be found. I, I need to know the conversation around picking Vertigo, right? Because we look at Mezzi's stats on this map, he doesn't even have a good time. Like, even thinking about his maps on Fnatic, it, just looking at his stats, I would say he would not say this is one of his, and he's zero and six right now, so. Yeah, just like Twist. Doesn't even like the map, maybe. So whose idea was it? How did they come to this? Obviously, that's something that couldn't be spoiled before the match began. Afterwards, would love to know. So the two guns will just get grandfathered into the next round and, oh, he brought up Twist, yeah, true. Yeah, sorry, I hate to do that to you. Yeah, I mean, you are also Canadian, by the mm -hmm. way. But, that's true. Yeah. I always knew the French didn't see themselves as one of us. Man, I can't believe we are nine rounds into this game and Flames is sitting at 16 and four. I mean, he's gotten entry frags. He's gotten yeah. an entire collection of trade frags already. Oh yeah. He could have put two clutches to his name within these 16 frags. Yes. I mean, we're talking about just a total takeover of the server from this young gentleman. This is a grand final. That is, this is something that Fame's gonna remember for the rest of his career, playing this okay. well in a grand final. And when we think about, of course, what Magisk and Dupree had, it was some of the most winningness careers in the world, right? Yeah. The history books were full of their names. Flames has only lifted one trophy in his career mm -hmm. back at Gamers 8 early this year. Yeah. Again, inexperience versus Magisk and Dupree. And on the big stage, the biggest criticism of Flames throughout the start of 2023 with his tenure back on OG was that this kid goes quiet. Instead, he's got the arena oh. silent. Spinks and Flames combine. I love the third HE, the commitment there, because you can throw two and do 90 damage. If you throw two perfectly, you do 100, but three, you could be a little sloppy and still kill him. So another 5v4. And that's a call out. Brokey's been there a couple of times. Oh, that's noise being made. Kerrigan's probably going to die, I think, as I was only waiting out this timing, but yeah, he's... Oh, he's gonna miss it, actually. He's going to leave the scope. Kerrigan scoops that up. Oh, wow, I thought for sure he was dead after that drop onto the ramp. This is big for FaZe to bring back this 5v4. And time is against Vitality now under 50 seconds. And he's sitting on it. He saw the shadow coming, so he kind of oh, jumped the gun. Oh, early. Now they're on high alert. So Kerrigan getting a little antsy as he sat there on his own. They heard one above running the rotation into the site. And 35 seconds, still looking composed, yeah. but the sands of time starting to fall through. It's a pack of players on ramp. And that ever-present lurk out of Sphinx, which catches Twists for his seventh death with no kills. And then Sphinx can even take his sweet time. He'll compromise the back line that is on A. Eventually, Rain's got to try to get out of there. And this is where Sphinx is best served, right? Getting to this point, but not going farther. Oh, and oh, Rob's tries to flank the flanker. Yeah, but a second before Rain gets caught. He's also got to walk. He's also got to walk, and there's... No way to call that out. So Spinks, domineering presence with the one kill. I don't think he cared about getting anything else. He knew that, that he was just going to bleed the time out the clock. And Vitality, that was, that was great. Shadow's working in their favor, both inside of mid and right there against FaZe on that flank lower. Yeah, it goes both ways. Now you got to be careful down there. In general, that's not a great place to hold from. Even if we go back to CSGO, when you take bottom ramp control as a CT, you don't want to leave people down there because that big box, people try to stand on top of it. There's no other angles you have to clear, so it's very easy to fight against you. But for Kerrigan, this is a new situation. He just killed Robson at, or Saiwu at an interesting timing, so he thought, all right, maybe if I die here, even if it's a little later, I could take a risk, but it'll be so late that if Ian I get one kill, Rain will do the rest of the work. There won't be enough time for the exact but Vitality are sort of just in time at every step of the way. And they approach pretty carefully. They didn't just start running right after that frag. Miss flick out of... No, oh, no it not isn't. A miss. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, bending bullets. Just trying to 
stop Flames' terror in this first half. So I was going to be looking for sweet revenge versus Kerrigan. Nearly drawing back that five versus four advantage out of the hands of Vitality last round, but I mean, FaZe, it's a pistol win and it's two 1v1s. Mm -hmm. That is what makes up this three round half so far from them. This is a, a very interesting spot for FaZe. Like, look at the map for them. It's just like a brand new complexion at the moment and a lot of it has to do with ROPS. Trying to peer over smoke, won't get a glance at anything. This consistency in Sphinx's top mid lurk though, Rops is on high alert for it. He may Wait. have just seen a sliver, oh. but as he tries to chase it, Sphinx gets back into the corner. Oh, so this works badly against FaZe right there, actually starting to regroup towards the other side of the map. Those two mid players are gonna be locking horns. And as Rops is preoccupied with bodies over on A, this B site is so prime for the taking. They're going slowly. They're, they're, oh no, another punish out of Zaiwu, and now they know. That phase are so scared of this coming in, but look at them. They're actually still on the ramp. They really believe there has to be someone back here. Reigns at least got a spot to try and hold, but he too falls with nothing. And while Brokey gets flashed off the angle, it's just too many members of Vitality and too tightly knit. The pack and the push from Vitality is unstoppable. Zywu's gonna get tagged up and Rops will kill one at the very least. It's Man. 12th round next. It's money on the line. I mean, this AK could end up being important but nothing's more important than getting some damn round wins. And Rob's will oh! flicks up and kills it. Hold on. Look how far away Sphinx is now. Of course, Rob's doesn't know. 1v4. We saw it from Rain. We saw it from Brokey. And we could damn well see it right here from Rob's. One tap and the peek out of Sphinx. He's got the cover from Green. Rob oh. can't end it this time. Oh. Not versus Vitality. Sphinx could have actually given that away. I mean, it, he was so far. From the B site, Rops on the flank did something nearly incredible right there with those two kills. All right, let's see it then. Oh, yes. under five seconds, you defuse the ball. Meanwhile, blood spills inside this B site. Dude, that was a weird round. Like, it seemed like there was a tacit understanding from Vitality that they knew they were up, phaser flanking, they were coming to reclare a ramp, they were totally scared about B, but they never wanted to take it. So, there kept becoming these opportunities for them nice to get flash. back into this. Yeah, Rain oh. sets up Kerrigan wonderfully. So, Kerrigan and Zai were going back and forth, but we've seen the response that comes out of Vitality when they lose that A hit. It's the B attack again. Man, I love FaZe's comfort here to try to push down B at the same time as A, even though they got what they wanted. They're looking for the 5v3. This could be a big one for Rops. We haven't seen a player in this position. It gets scary for him, though. He could get spammed. Oh, he at least gets burned out. Dropped to 23, but he escapes. At least around the corner, he's got two teammates to keep him standing. Leaning on their shoulders. Wow. Flames takes off the heads. Goes back for second <laughs> servings and just disengages. That is a 20 kill half from Flames at least. Rain will slide forward and clear Apex off the corner into the 3v3 as FaZe continue to just try and get something. A hope, a chance, <laughs> and there's Mezzi. His first two kills of this map. Finally a little impact from the Brit. Brokey tacks the clutch yet again. And you can see the odds. So incredibly to Vitality's favor. They decided to take Inferno out of this series, but maybe Vertigo will be the bane of their existence. Brokey looking for an entry, looking for a jump. And as he gets into it, Sphinx will waste no time. This is a Vitality that's not playing games. They are making a sprint for the crown. What's going on CS Money fans? We're about to have some fun with the Ecos play. And it's here at the Blast Premier Full Finals where I'm expecting these guys to make themselves a cosplay of a CS skin. Amongst all this stuff on the table, whoever goes first gets the most picks of stuff. Whoever goes last, unlucky you're left over with the scraps. Good luck, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first up is you, Maui. What are we going for? So I'm gonna be the Empress AK. Yes? Okay. Uh, we've got a crown already here. This is a perfect red for it. What are we going for here, We're friend? going for the monkey business. 
Love bananas. Always last. Pim, what do you see on this table of where you think, I want to make this skin? We are time restricted right now, James. No, I don't believe that. Take well, your I time. am time restricted. Right. I don't want to be here anymore. So oh, what wow. I'm going to do is I'm going to speed run this. Okay, we're going to put that on. Because it's just like the butt of the gun or the hilt of the gun. I don't know. I'd like to get you involved with this, James. I'd like you to blow up this banana whilst I do some artwork. We're gonna put this on, this is the crown. <laughs> I can't do this. Like, pinch it. I think a lot of people will resonate with what I'm doing. I, I think it's diamonds, technically, that are on the Empress. We're working with what we've got. I'm gonna stick these onto the shoulders. I'm gonna put on this shirt. Oh, oh cool. maybe one of these. Right, I'll try to put paint. Why is the brown coming on? Oh, the end part. Damn, I haven't said what I'm doing yet, right? No, I don't know what this is. This is a beautiful skin. Well. I think I'm going to use all that paint. Um, there is a little circle at the bottom of the handle which mm -hmm. says five seven on it. We're going to tape this to myself. I think we're going to have glue. Pretty sure that everyone out there has opened quite a few of these. Where are you going to put the banana? I'm going to tape it on. <laughs> I'm terrified this is going to get on my sweater. Pose. Yep. We're happy with that? Yeah, I'm I'm very happy. Um I'm done. That is it. That is all your effort you're putting into this. A sand view. A cheap sand view. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have our three designs for the skins here. Creativity, <laughs> looks, and effort put into it. Effort and creativity, zero for you, Pimp. But looks because you look so good where you're wearing your shirt. We'll give you an eight for that. Failure is your middle name, so move on. Freya. Creativity. I'll give you a seven. What? Yeah. yeah, I think that's fair. Effort, you're only getting a three. The look is very creative. So I'll give you seven on that? 17, I'll take it. Yeah. You, the crown just fits you so well. So As it does. We'll say a seven for that. For the look and the feel, I think we deserve an eight. Effort that you put into it. All right, I'll give you five more on top then. Okay. He did bribe me a little bit. Thank you so much. Maui's the winner overall here. These guys did their best. They put some effort in for sure. But you guys at home, I know you can do better. Use the hashtag eCosplay and show me if you can make a sick skin and maybe make yourself into better than any of these three bugs. You can win yourself a very expensive skin. Go check it out. Good luck. Show me what you got. We jump back to the server with Twists still sitting on zero frags throughout this map. Ooh. This is an unexpected turn of events out of phase, but... It's maybe, also an unexpected map. Yes, yeah. exactly. Maybe so because we find ourselves on Vertigo. Their confidence in all seven pools has been tested this evening to start this series. But if we look at the match streak that FaZe are on at the moment, yeah. they have lost a map in the majority of those matches. Ten of those matches within the streak always feature FaZe going to a third. Mm. Now, a beating of this level, a whooping 9-3 half to kick off Vertigo, this could be a whole other test of the mental. And, and you could say that this is a, a curveball, but FaZe are supposed to be a seven map team. So they claim. Oh, that's a good player to get down low. Oh, through the wood. Whoa, a bunch he came of damage. back to help wow. the kills. Two more for Flames. How does he manage to get himself into every fight? And then Mezzi yeah. given a chance to lock it down. That's a full house on the B site. Whoa. Just a slaughter of FaZe on the approach. Dude, this is going to be a career best map for Flamesy. No doubt. 22 and 6. Unreal. This Look at is this. stepping on the gas right now. That's unreal. He was down to three health before that happened. You know, Apex is going to pick him up after the map's over. Man, and we started this out round two after phase one, the pistol with Vitality winning with a buy. It's very similar to this. It's actually astounding to pull that off on T-side Vertigo. What the hell? So having to concede this one, giving themselves a singular chance to keep Vitality off of 12 rounds with the buy that'll come in the next. Could be bolstered by a bomb plant. We saw Vitality pull it off with basically Glocks, but those nades find their home. Rain blown apart. Pressure goes down the ramp to confirm there's nothing else. Mezzi could be tested. And again, a bomb plant here is a slight win for FaZe. But he leans back, allows them to get ever closer. Gets his first few kills in the final round of the first half. More than doubles it in the following pistol, and Mezzi's just gonna go ahead to rip two go players on. off the push. There's another one on the box, and he's dead. This is Vitality to 11, wow. and FaZe still in shambles. There's so many interesting storylines, first half of the year, second half of the year. Players, IGLs, who are both playing well, who have done a lot. 
and evolved uh, star players who are getting back into the comfort zone. Rob becoming the best player in CS2. And Spinks as well, who has just continued on in his form. He has been completely consistent throughout the year, ever since Rio took place. I am Rio, I should say. And uh, has never left Zaiwu's side since then. And he is... Like, Robson and Spinks are the best examples of, of traditional lurkers, a classic in their roles. But Spinks is even more of a purist than Robs is in terms of how hard his lurks are every single round. And that style of play, people thought was going to disappear after early days get right era into happy into some players who are known for it doing it every round but they've actually brought it back in a modern day of cs when demos are being watched like demos are being parsed you know and it, by the dozens at the same time to figure out what kind of rotations you make he's still pulling that off today coaches analysts assistant analysts yeah so many eyes on every single one of your moves inside the server, and those moves could be coming to a quick end. Remember, the one gun round phase have to work with, and it's gonna need to be Kerrigan to at least get some pressure off A. But he can't manage that second frag. Apex pulls back with the M4, Ooh. and he lays down lead, lays down the law. Vitality will not fumble inside sight. Apex will not be bested, will not be moved. And Brokey, the next to falter. God damn. 12 3 from Vitality. We could sit here and praise FaZe and their ability to come back map after map. Yeah. This is the biggest test that their streak has seen. Well, at least they won't have to stew in it. This map could be over soon. And they could talk about how they, oh, they didn't expect the veto. It's fine. We're going to move on to the next map. But uh, this is a feather in the cap of Vitality and for Apex as the captain to see himself playing well as well as seeing one of his young guns play this well in a grand final in front of the biggest crowd so far that he's played. He'll be a proud, proud man. Final chance for Neo to get in. The last time FaZe as an organization won a trophy here in the Royal Arena, Neo was inside the server. That's nuts. Trying to tap into that legacy here. I think Cold Zero was the IGL, but we later found out it was Nico. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Respect for supporting them when they're down. That's when they need it the most. The triple Galil play. And the energy they've kept all the, all the way through CS2 is... We're only X number of rounds down. They've only got nine. It's the one of the biggest comebacks that they have to make. But I think one foot in front of the other is the strat. I 